and here we've got quite a nice amount now of uh, late flowering hedge parsley and uh, there's quite a lot of this around where I live in Nottingham I think generally it's quite a common plant um, nice to see it and uh, it adds a bit of nice white colour to these uh, hedgerow paths at this time of year and there's also a considerable amount of um, blackberries and brambles growing here that have set in fairly incredible numbers and they're quite delicious I've picked a lot already and uh, I think I just helped myself to one here and you could tell they're ripe because if they easily fall off off the vine of the plant if they're still red or not ripe it's not worth trying to get them off the plant um, but these most of them are quite ripe now and um, strangely enough there haven't been people down here picking them not sure why also here we've got quite a lot of agrimony agrimonia and um, it's quite tall and the seed heads are very distinctive and if I come across any I will show them to you and here we've got some extremely tall very tall uh, hairy willow herbs here they must be at least two meters tall and I can understand why they have to grow really tall to grow above the brambles <clears throat> and you can tell broad-leaved willow herb because the sorry a hairy willow herb because of the four lobed stigma along with the very large pink flowers and just a single flower here it looks like of meadow cranes bill geranium pretense with the very interesting I think they're anthers or a stigma I don't know what those black things are in the middle but it's nice to see it here only one plant though as far as I can tell and some hairy willow herb a bit lower this time and easier to film and you can see those four lobed stigmas much more easily on this plant here because it's a bit shorter it's not having to fight its way through the brambles and there are a lot of agrimony plants here all coming up in together in a patch and they may well even be the same plant that is spread by stolons and uh, there are plenty of seed heads here um, that I can show you um, probably the best one is over here and there hopefully I can get them in focus for you to look at very distinctive conical shaped with hairs on the ends and there's more of them here much taller probably because the plants a bit more shaded here but you can still see some of the flowers oh, they're dying off now I think there's a good seed head look wow that's a good picture of them a weed to many but to pollinators this plant's a real boon it's one of the most popular plants with pollinators but of course it's again a grey morning um, so the bees and the hoverflies haven't come out yet just an incredible set of blackberries this year at all stages of ripeness there from the very ripe to the quite unripe and they're all forming well and the thing about blackberries is that they self pollinate they don't actually need pollinators so you should actually get a good set of uh, blackberries uh, in any year providing there's enough water and sunshine pollinators aren't required and in fact I've never seen an insect oh yeah the, se the seed head 
of hogweed and you can just see how big the seeds are in my hand there and hogweed is another plant which is in spring a delicious vegetable simply because you can cut the shoots and they taste I suppose a bit like asparagus but the young shoots are nice fried like many different wild herbs frying them up seems to bring out the flavor so that's hogweed I suppose I couldn't uh, go through this walk without mentioning ragwort, another member of Asteraceae, which is seen as a weed, and it's in fact dangerous to livestock, and it's a legal requirement for landovers, landowners to remove it from their land if livestock grazes on it, because it can kill livestock. But from my experience, you always see it growing in fields, and there we've got a pollinator again. On this plant don't know what that one is looks like a small hoverfly or a fly and it's a gray morning but the pollinators are still out and here the hairy willow herb is now setting seed and with the f four or five lobed seed heads there and you can see how each seed has a parachute and it'll just blow away in the wind and form new colonies which spread by stolons. And here's a teasel, again majestic and loads of herbal and traditional uses, particularly in the linen and cotton industry for preparing fabrics. But um, there's just a couple still in flower here and um, the flowers are pink as you can see and the seeds come into the between the long spines there growing among the hairy willow herbs are these american willow herbs which i call epilobium adenocolon and these have been in fruit and seed for a number of weeks now they seem to come out earlier than the other willow herbs. In a mixed colony like this, you'd expect to see hybrids, but I haven't seen any that I could definitely call hybrids in this colony uh, when I've examined it over the years. They all seem to be well-defined species here. And this is spear thistle, very popular with pollinators. And I think I've just missed a fly on here. Um, it's quite different from uh, creeping thistle but still a fairly invasive weed and uh, hurts you if you get entangled in it. That's spear thistle. And there's another willow herb here, square stemmed willow herb, another different species, a colony of different types growing together and um, there you can see a flower not quite open but that's definitely square stemmed willow herb. The leaves are much thinner, strap-like and shinier than American willow herb. 